before I do start this video, make sure to use my TCG player affiliate down below if you're looking for any of these singles that I talk about today. Also, this channel is sponsored by Arcane Fortress. If you're looking for the best deck boxes around, make sure to use my link down below in the description to check them out. One other way you can support the channel is by becoming a patron. There are some great benefits of being a patron to the channel, such as giveaways, deck advice, and more when you do join. Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Devin coming back at you with another video today on PubSlop MTG, and in this video today, I will be diving into five commanders that were overhyped in the last couple of years. And the reason why I wanted to go into this video and talk about this subject is the fact that we are going into spoiler season for Outlaws of Thunder Junction, and knowing me and talking about spoilers, sometimes I can get overhyped on some other cards that are probably not deserving of that. In the past couple of years, we have been getting an enormous amount of spoilers, basically like every month for a new entire set. And sometimes you may come across a card that may be way over busted and first glance, but then later on might not be as powerful as you think. And so that's why I did want to make this video overall. I feel like there's a lot of commanders that we can learn from uh, from the past. So that's why in today's video, I will be discussing five over hyped commanders that have come out in the past couple of years. And so let's get right into it. All right, so first up, I do have Garth One-Eye, and this came out of Modern Horizons 2, I wanna say in 2021-ish? I'm not 100% sure when the data came out, but a lot of people were overhyping this card because it was bringing a lot of different powerful spells that were from Magic's history. So let's first read what it does. So you could tap it, choose a card that hasn't been chosen from the Among Dischant, uh, Brain Geyser, Terror, Shivan Dragon, Regrowth, and Black Lotus. Create a copy of the card of the chosen name. You may cast the copy and you still pay its costs so the big ticket item uh what sold a lot of people on this card at first was the fact that you can make a black lotus in commander and because black lotus is banned in commander obviously a lot of people were excited about this ability having the ability to basically cast a copy of that obviously you still have to pay the mana cost but black lotus is zero so a lot of people were over hyping this for the fact that you can just do all those different abilities some people would go into a blink ability so that you could restart that give them haste or some sort of way to attack them immediately so that you can get more black lotuses on the battlefield but again this is more overhyped for the fact that it just uh, came out and a lot of people were excited about all those abilities and honestly it looks like a very fun commander from magic's past in the way that you're casting a lot of things from magic's past not actually it's from the past but technically it is from the past so this one was more overhyped not so much for the fact that it was very powerful because i don't think it's very powerful at all but for the fact that yeah it could use all sorts of different abilities of uh, getting all sorts of different spells and so this one isn't as bad a lot of people were over hyping it as first i will say that but that's mainly it for garth Next up, a lot of people were calling this for it to be banned, and like many of the Praetors, I do understand this one. Uh, Jinja Tax is Progress Tyrant, uh, so this does have the ability to copy artifact into the sorcery spells that you do cast, but it does have the negative effect for your opponents. Whenever an opponent casts an artifact, instant or sorcery, you will counter that spell. Obviously, this will only trigger once each turn, so the fact that if somebody tries to remove Jinja Taxis with removal spell, they'll be like, haha, I know you can't because I'll just counter it with Jinja Taxis. So basically you will have to use basically like two spells to remove Jinja Taxis. So I do understand the hate of it, but honestly, I don't know why a lot of people were calling for this to be banned because it is seven mana. Seven mana is quite a bit. I know there's a lot of ways to ramp into it very quickly, but if you're using a lot of fast mana in blue, most likely you are playing CDH. But when this does go onto the battlefield, it does uh, present a very powerful ability of copying spells and negating your opponent's spells when they're trying to remove Jinja Taxes. I do understand this a little bit more, but but I will say this was uh, probably overhyped for the fact that a lot of people were calling for this to be banned, but honestly, I don't think it's deserving of the ban whatsoever. But again, I do understand the power level of it, but just the mana cost is restricting it. All right, so the next one is a more recent one, and that's Rowan Scion of War. So a lot of people were very hyped on Rowan Scion of War, not for that menace ability, of course, but for that second ability. You can tap her spells you cast this turn that are black or red, cost X less to cast, where X is the amount of life you lost this turn activate only as a sorcery so a lot of people were very hyped on the fact that you could just pay an x amount of life to reduce the cost of your spells so that you could dump it into a big giant torment of hailfire for example and i do see that i do see the possibility of a lot of people liking that for that effect but it's very glass cannon like a lot of people probably had the first experience of playing this card super excited to reduce a lot of their spells by paying life but the fact that they did pay that life and then the opponent realized what they were doing and they remove rowan before they do tap it it just kind of 
seems awful in that fact. It doesn't really create a good play experience for the player that is playing with it or maybe even playing against it because if they do go off, a lot of people are like, okay, they're doing their Roman sign of war losing life theme. But the fact that it does lead to a lot of unfun play patterns, uh, if you do lose Roman in the process of losing life, you just lost life for no reason. On the opposite end, uh, you are going to have a lot of opponents be salty. The fact that you did pay a lot of life and then didn't dump it into a big giant spell to win the game. So really, it's like a lose-lose situation for me personally. I know a lot of people may like Rowan Sign of War, and you can be angry with me and down below in the comments. But for me personally, I found it to be overhyped for that reason. That a lot of people thought it was going to be super powerful, but the fact that it doesn't have haste, a lot of people are going to remove it before you even do the thing. Alright, so following that, I do have another Praetor on this list from recent memory with Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. A lot of people like uh, the other Praetor with Gingitaxis were calling for this to be banned. I want to say uh, the Commander Committee was talking about how this should have never been printed because it will ruin the experience from the Commander format. So let's first read what Elish Dorn does. So for four and a white, does have vigilance and basically is a panharmonicon and is a torpor orb on the battlefield. And so I do understand the play pattern behind this, uh, giving you the positive effect of doubling your ETB triggers and turning off all your opponent's ETB triggers can lead to unfun play patterns. And of course you could say, yeah, this is one of those, oh, you just run removal, remove Elish Dorn and you're all good. And I completely understand that, but on the opposite end, there are some instances where I want to play an ETB creature, but I see Elish Norn on the battlefield, and I'm like, oh crap, I can't play that ETB creature because of Elish Norn. But I will say overall, this has been out for basically a year, and honestly, I don't think it's negatively impacted anything because you just play around the ability. A lot of people, again, were calling for this to be banned like Gingitaxis for the unfun play patterns, and I don't think it necessarily needed it. If we do have a lot of Panharmonicons in the game, we could just play that, and if we do have a lot of ways to shut down ETBs, we have that as well, but I don't think it was necessarily needing to be called to be banned. But lastly, uh, this is probably the most overhyped card that I've ever seen in my entire life and that is Lord Xander the Collector and if you weren't around for spoiler season for Streets of New Capenna everybody was losing their minds off of this card a lot of people were realizing oh my gosh this is going to be the most busted thing ever to play against and and that is going to ruin a lot of game experiences for commander and honestly it didn't do anything in the commander format this has been out for about two years and i actually never even seen lord xander played in a commander game personally and maybe some of you may have experience playing against lord xander but it does have that negative effect for your opponents when it does enter the battlefield target opponent discards half their cards in their hand rounded down and whenever he does attack defense player mills half their library rounded down and when he does die target opponent sacrifices half the non-land permanents they control rounded down and for seven mana three of those colors being grixis colors and as a six six body and so again a lot of people were focusing on the fact that it had all those negative effects uh, against one opponent that they choose and that's the big problem that i found with this card is the fact that you choose one specific opponent that you're negatively impacting this would be way more oppressive if it said each opponent uh, discards half their cards in their hand or each opponent uh, mills half their library or each of their opponent uh, destroys half their non-land permanents or sacrifices non-land permanents but you kind of get the point point. and so like the other experience with rowan it will lead to a lot of unfun game plans but this is a pretty cool looking card based off the art alone but the fact that it does have all those abilities but being seven mana is a little too restrictive for it to be called banned all right that is it those are my five cards that are overhyped from the gecko again a lot of those cards were mainly looked at as wow these are going to be super busted in the format and then later on now nobody really is going to be playing them too often don't get me wrong i feel like a lot of these cards are very powerful for what they are i do feel like elish norn is very powerful too but the fact that uh, a lot of people were overhyping them and calling for them to be banned was honestly a little nonsensical and i feel like that does have to do with the perpetual hype that we are in with a lot of magic the gathering sets a lot of changes happening here and there a lot of people are making new decks scrapping other decks because they weren't actually what they seem to be but let me know down below in the comments what are your thoughts and opinions about this video is there any overhyped commander that i did miss or that you would like to talk to me about down below in the comments i'd love to hear your feedback also make sure to like share and subscribe to the channel with out of the way thank you for stomping by